he found out he was going to be drug tested and he just went crazy on trying to like get get the weed out oh of my his body. God, so he bro. passed the drug test, bro. Dude, he was like, I saw him at the gym every day just sprinting on the treadmill, bro. And then he was going to shave his head at some point. This is Modern Day Hippie. We are your homies who've done nearly every drug under the sun. Over 600 psychedelic trips and nearly every kind of bender you can possibly imagine have armed us with a universe of knowledge. I'm Yuki, and with my co-host Reggie, we talk about how we do drugs in a responsible, safe, and fun way to improve our lives. Before we dive in, and so we don't get sued, a quick legal disclaimer. This podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. Our goal is to educate and inform others about the realities of substance use in an engaging and entertaining format. We share these experiences so you can learn from them without trying them yourself. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to attempt to recreate anything found in this episode or in any of our other content. We are not confessing to any acts stated in this podcast. The content in this episode should not be treated as factual or real in any way. With that, we welcome you through our portal and hope you enjoy the show. What's up, hippies? Hope you're having a vibey day today. Today, we're just going to jump straight into the topic. Yuki, if you could only take one drug for the rest of your life, what would it be? Man, this is this is a tough question because there's like multiple parameters along which I would consider this, right? So I've actually given a decent amount of thought to this because when I'm in conversation with someone, especially someone new who I meet, and early on, I discover that they're like into drugs. I try to get a vibe of like what their favorite drugs are because I feel like that that can tell you a decent amount about a person. And so, of course, that begs the question of what are my favorite drugs? And there are a couple that I often say are my top three, top five, but saying like a top favorite slash one I would only take for the rest of my life. Um, I, I've actually never done that before. And I think picking like answering this question of if you could only take one drug for the rest of your life versus what if, is your favorite, those are very different things, right? Because the example I'm thinking of is like, Molly is definitely one of my favorite drugs to be on, like sensation wise. It's just like a beautiful experience, but I don't think it quite hits the box of something that feels sustainable longer term. Yeah. Because dude. A, like, yeah, like you can't do it that often. That kind of sucks. Um, and then just even if you're doing Molly throughout your life, I don't know if that's the best thing. Like, I hope I will be in a position to roll, you know, here and there throughout my life, but we'll, we'll see. It's just not the, the most sustainable. I know. How, how are you thinking about just like approaching the question? Dude, it's a tough one for me, man, because there are certain drugs that are just like, you could do them more often. You know what I mean? Kind of like with the Molly thing, you can't really do it that often. So for me, it's like, I love weed. I always go back to it and I could literally do it every day if I wanted to. But is that really, if I could only pick one drug, like what am I going to miss the most? Is kind of my criteria here. And I'm thinking it's got to be a psychedelic. Like I think I will miss tripping way more than I will miss getting high any day. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. No. So first off, I'm really gl glad that you brought up the point of like, what drug would you not want to like do without, you know, thinking of the opposite of like, what is the thing that you would absolutely not just like you would miss it so much um, that it just, you know, li life could still be great and very fun, but you know, it would be missing that little extra like spice, so to speak. Yeah, um, dude. dude. And I'm on the same page with you. Like, a psychedelic for damn sure like it just i feel like it hits the box of it's a really special unique powerful experience um but most psychedelics are not like physically damaging to you um or or to your like brain in in any significant ways um and they can lead to a lot of like personal growth uh which you know mm -hmm. a lot of other drugs you can't necessarily get from Dude, and another thing, they don't even drug test you for psychedelics, like for most of them, you know what I mean? So like, if you ever were in a position where you're going to get drug tested, like at some point in your life, like you would be fucked if you picked a drug that like you'd get tested for, because then you can't do any drugs and that'll be kind of boring, you know? Yo, yeah, that's facts. And honestly, especially with the pace at which just like pop culture is, is picking up around psychedelics, um, it just makes sense. Like I feel like five, 10 years from now, it's just going to be like a common conversation around psychedelics. And 
dude, I've actually been noticing this in really subtle ways, like small sidebar here. Um, so many just TV shows and movies that I've seen recently that have come out like in, in like modern current times. Dude, they, they mention like mushrooms, they mention acid. Uh, I've even si- seen one or two that mentioned 2CB. I'm like, dude, these are things that like, Damn. I feel like even like three, five years ago, just were not really in the the modern lexicon. Um, and now more and more people are talking about them and curious about them. So, Dude, it's yeah. got to be the streaming services, I feel like. They just have so much more freedom to say whatever the fuck they want versus like if it was on cable, they definitely can't be saying that shit. Yeah, yeah, that's facts. Well, it's super interesting, right? Because even like, I don't know if you've seen those posts that are talking about like TV shows that were airing in the 90s, or early 2000s. And things happen in those TV shows that, you know, just wouldn't fly on any form of television in 2023. Like not so much relating to drugs, but, you know, things relating to misogyny or racism, things that were just like casually accepted 20 or 30 years ago uh, that today I think we're like aware enough as a society to to not be okay with. But it's like you'll see these scenes from, I don't know, like Seinfeld or Friends or whatever. Um, and don't quote me on those exact shows I haven't seen either, but it's like these older TV shows where you see a scene and you're like, damn, like, I can't believe that was shown on like national cable television. Yeah, dude. But back to the psychedelics, man. I think that another main reason why I would have to pick a psychedelic is it's just too good of a tool. Like I rely on it too much when I'm in like stuck in a bad place mentally to get out of that place. And if I didn't have that as a tool, like, I don't know, man. I'd probably just be eating junk food or something. And like that would kill me, like literally kill me. Yeah, that's facts. Uh, honestly, it, it, it's funny because my relationship with psychedelics is it, it's pretty 50 50 on the using it like as a like, like as a means to a goal, you know, like tripping with intention, trying to get something out of it versus doing it just recreationally for fun. But both of those approaches I have deeply enjoyed. And actually pretty recently, I've had experiences with psychedelics where I was taking them in like a purely fun setting, but I ended up just having like very profound thoughts, literally in like the middle of a fucking rave. I'm like having the most (laughs) profound thoughts about life and relationships and like what I want to do with my life. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, it's like if I am thinking about that same experience on Molly, like I'm having an absolute blast, but it's like my mind's probably fairly blank because i'm just like super into the music and whatnot and and that is a wonderful experience in its own right but yeah i'm i'm not getting quite as much i would say um like personal growth character building uh out of that yeah man but now you got to pick one psychedelic so we narrowed it down a little bit but there's still a decision to make here yeah i mean yeah the, the the two i would pick between are mushrooms and lsd like those are the ones i have the most experience with but um i know there are there are some other ones on the table as well that that you might have in mind yeah for me it would be between 4aco dmt lsd and mushrooms and the only reason i say like i might say mushrooms over 4aco dmt is just that i'm more likely to be in a situation where other people have mushrooms and they want like and i want to trip with them and I would much rather be able to do that than like only be able to do 4 ACO DMT whenever I have it. Cause like nobody has that shit. You know what I mean? Like you're never going to go to a rave and someone's going to hand you that shit. Like if you're lucky, I guess, but it's a lot less likely. So I'd have to go with the mushrooms over the 4 ACO DMT. But then again, it's like mushrooms or acid, right? Mushrooms or LSD. That's really the tough question here. Dude. I mean, honestly, you, you, you made me think of a, a, a novel perspective on this, which is just like the logistical aspect, which is how accessible are these drugs? Um, I, I think, right. Like the four ACO DMT, like I haven't found a dealer that has it on their like menu of, of what they sell. Um, but in theory, I feel like if, if you know that that is the only drug you can take for the rest of your life, when you find someone who sells it, wouldn't you just buy like a shit ton of it? Um, and that way you're not really constrained by the if supply you have chain limitations. The money, like, I feel like I've like considered that before That's with fair. buying drugs. It's like, how much do I want to buy? It's like, well, shit, how much can I really afford? Cause if it were up to me, I would just buy like as much as I'll need for a year, but. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't work that way usually. Dude. <laughs> hey, hippies. We hope you're enjoying the show so far. 
If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and are having a good time, you need to come over to YouTube and subscribe to the Modern Day Hippie YouTube channel. We publish exclusive video content, and I promise you the experience is richer and more interesting. So if you're getting any value at all, stop what you're doing, open up the YouTube app, and subscribe at Modern Day Hippie. If you're watching this on YouTube and aren't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Go press subscribe. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, no, honestly, sometimes I think about it when I'm like debating how much drugs to buy. Like I don't, especially like powder drugs. Um, I like don't take on a super frequent basis. Like sometimes, like there are some seasons where like I will do it more often, but like it, it, it can easily take me like probably six to nine months to go through like an eight ball of ketamine. Um, and yeah, like, yeah that that's makes like, sense though. Like to me, that's a decent amount of ketamine, but I know to other people, like that's like <laughs> kind of child's play. I like, can do that in like a couple of weeks, maybe even less. But it's like, it, it, it's made me think of this question is like, do drugs have an expiration date? Um, and that's something that I, I, I think we should, we should research and, and get back to the listeners on or yeah. bring someone on who, who knows about this. I'm like, I've thought about like, that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how much ketamine or coke or whatever do I buy if there's a potential that I'm not going to eat? do it for like a year or two you know damn yeah yeah we'll get back to y'all on that <laughs> do some research yeah. i have some yeah. hypotheses but i won't share them until we have some backing behind what we say yeah good call good call on the lsd for the shrooms right it's like it's pros and cons right um like for me lsd i prefer that tripping experience overall like the trips are more visual um and like the come up is much smoother but then on the downside they just last for fucking ever like i uh i went to this like three day just like edm specific festival in my city not too long ago here had a blast like every day I did different drugs i i think it was saturday that my girlfriend and i did acid and we dropped the acid at probably like seven or eight and that was like the kind of beginning of this festival because it was definitely more of like a nighttime thing going until 2 or 3 a.m. Um, and it was such a great experience. But then we got home and it's like, we're definitely not go going to go to sleep. So honestly, we had a blast. Like we made the most of it. We were up until 4 or 5 a.m. just like DJing and, and having a good time. But it's just a lot to sign up for, you know, whereas shrooms could have taken them and probably been asleep by like two or three like very comfortably dude but that's like a pro and a con like sometimes you want the long trip and it's just like more efficient if you think about it but i think it also really just depends on how often you're tripping because if you're only tripping like once a month like me personally i would want to do a longer trip but if i'm tripping every weekend like i definitely don't want to be tripping for like eight to 12 hours every week that would just be too much oh yeah definitely not no honestly i think what it comes down to is how much can you plan your life around your trips? Like if you want to intentionally do that, right? Because if I'm thinking about even in my life, like the reason that I do shrooms so often is because it doesn't take a lot of planning. it will just be like asking my girlfriend, like, hey, do you want to just trip together? Like Friday night, you know, we'll work, we'll have dinner and then we can take mushrooms to like seven or eight and be totally fine. Like still get a pretty normal night's sleep. Whereas, yeah, with acid, like I need to like set aside a whole day for that. Like part of the trip, at least, like should probably be during the daytime, um, unless I'm going to plan on being up all night, which I do. I do often, but honestly, I'm trying to, I'm trying to regulate my sleep schedule more. And so I think that's, that's become more of like a personal priority for me as well. Yeah. Sleep's important, man. It, it reminds me of the IR versus XR debate in Adderall. Like some people swear by XR and some people swear by IR and some people mm. only take one or the other. But at the end of the day, it's like, do you want to be wired for four hours or wired for eight hours? And it's like, I don't know. It's different because on Adderall, you could be functional. So like I personally would rather be yeah. wired for longer. But then if I don't need to be wired for that long, I don't want to be taking that much of it, especially if I want to go to sleep, like what you're saying. So, oh, definitely. Yeah. And it's so like, yeah, I feel like Adderall in the way it's like somewhat meant to be taken, obviously mostly meant to be taken for like ADHD, but even beyond that, like I know like fighter pilots and just people who need to be super focused over long periods of time will take it to help with that. 
Um, yeah, like it, it is a very pure tool in that sense. Um, obviously, it's not always used in that way, but um, yeah, like that's a very functional uh, drug and experience in, in a different way. But also, psychedelics are definitely definitely functional. Um, yeah, like, and then if I'm thinking about shrooms, it's like can do it more frequently. It lasts less, and honestly, I feel like over time I've come to appreciate my shrooms trips more actually so i feel like my journey with mushrooms specifically was my first several times doing them i was like very like i had a good time it was like impressed with this substance i'm like okay this is great um and then i kind of had this middle part where like i still enjoyed it and i still like felt things but felt like i wasn't getting quite as much out of it or i was i, th- I think subconsciously i was comparing it to my acid experiences which are very visual um but recently on my shrooms trips i've really started to appreciate the more like cerebral like mental aspect of mushrooms um and honestly like i've gotten a lot of good from that and and actually on on a future episode i need to talk about my uh my guided mushroom trip that i did it was my first guided mushroom trip and like that was that was a profound experience um, and I think mushrooms was the perfect drug for that because acid would have just been like too long, you know, it's like be with, with my guide. Um, and mushrooms just makes you think, I think in, in like interesting different ways. So, uh, I, I, I think my final answer would be mushrooms. Um, yeah. and, honestly, and- I don't know if my, <laughs> I don't know if my background gives it away or my hat, but I definitely <laughs> would have to go with mushrooms final answer as well. <laughs> yeah yeah no that that makes sense and, it, and it's funny right like even if i look at my current drug usage like mushrooms is by far uh one of my or by far the one that i use the most um and, and actually as i will caveat this with um as we've been like experimenting with different formulas for this like mushroom companion supplement we've like found one that honestly makes the come up so freaking smooth that like it's kind of surprising that you're on mushrooms because i feel like i have this just mental notion of mushrooms that like it's gonna feel a little like not pleasant before it gets really good because i'm definitely someone who i get like a little bit anxious on the come up occasionally nauseous occasionally stomach aches but like the 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 come up i had on this like last iteration of, of the formula that we made it was just like it was so smooth. Like I was just in this crowd at a rave, felt nothing bad. And then I was just like, oh shit, like I'm tripping. Like, where did that come from? It was almost like I didn't realize it, but I was like definitely tripping. Um, and that was clean. So I think shrooms combined with that, I think, I think we're golden. <laughs> Damn, dude. I'm really excited for you all to launch that, man. I can't, I can't even imagine what that's like. Yeah, dude. I didn't, I didn't even didn't realize know. how much like the vitamins and shit make a difference, you know? Dude, it's crazy. And actually some, um, there are some like, you know, personalities and, and people out there who've been very deep in like the psych docs world since like way before it was even remotely mainstream. Um, and, and quite a few of them have like their own specific stacks for like supplements that they take alongside their mushrooms. And for them, it's usually like two to four ingredients, like pretty basic stuff. Um, but we have found 14 ingredients that we think work, work very well together. Uh, but anyway. We'll talk about that uh, at a future date. All that to say is I, I think that the biggest problem that I see with mushrooms, which is the anxiety and the nausea, can be mitigated pretty well, honestly. So that kind of eliminates that con and makes it makes it a good first choice for me. Oh yeah. Let's talk real quick about why other drugs didn't make it make the cut for us. I think yeah. like, most people realistically would probably pick alcohol just because of like the social settings and like the number of times that you're going to be drinking with other people. But it's just too destructive for me, man. Like there's just too many bad side effects to alcohol, especially like on your body, just your organs. Like, Dude, definitely. Yeah. Honestly, like in the last few months more than ever, I feel like I've been meeting more and more people who don't drink like either at all or very little. And I I don't know if that's partially because of age, just like getting a little bit older, um, meeting like uh, some older people. 
Um, or if it's actually just like societally, I feel like people are starting to realize this. It's honestly probably a little bit of both, but um, I, I even have good friends who like, they still drink and they go out and they drink and they know how shitty alcohol makes them feel. And they're like, dude, I don't know why I do this. And I'm like, I, I don't know why you did, bro. Like, you can stop. And, and look, like, like, I get it. Like, it is a social thing. And I, I think if you don't have another option you can turn to and fall back on, um, then it can be tough. You're at the club and the music is thumping, but you, you've got nothing left in the tank. So what do you do? Sniff some cacao. Yep, you heard that right. Sniff some cacao. It's the hottest new trend in the club and party scene. One bump-sized sniff of raw chocolate powder contains the caffeine equivalent to a half cup of coffee and boom, it hits instantly. And the best part is you can now sniff cacao anytime, anywhere. Right out in the open, in front of the DJ booth, or the stage, even at the VIP table with your friends. Now, how does that happen without drawing unwanted attention? Well, Snowgo's spring-loaded bump straws make it possible. These classy, triple mirror polished bump straws are the safest, most discreet way to enjoy sniffing cacao. In fact, you've most likely already seen people wearing Snowgo's bump straws as pendants around their necks without even knowing it. Discover why sniffing cacao using Snowgo bump straws is being called the biggest revolution in partying since the invention of rock and roll. Jump on over to snogostraws.com to learn more. That's S N O G O S T R A W S.com and use discount code MDH25 for 25% off your entire order. Dude, so for example, I um I decided to start trying these nicotine free vapes, which I know you've been trying for a while. Um I just got like some Instagram ads for some. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me try them out. Um, and they definitely don't hit the same. Obviously, they don't have nicotine. But now when I go out, I bring both a nicotine vape and a nicotine free vape. And that way, at least I'm being conscious of why I'm hitting one or the other. Because I realize that half the time when I'm hitting a regular nicotine vape, it's just because I'm like fucked up on drugs and I want something to smoke. And so when I realize that, I can put away that vape get that nicotine free one and still get just that like physical fixation of smoking something and, and, and just in that in the same way that i have that replacement for my like nicotine vape in those settings i think people need replacements for for alcohol yeah that's a great point i think yeah. soda did that for a little bit right but oh, what did soda like coke and stuff but that's back when it had drugs in it i feel like i guess that was like a prohibition thing wasn't it Dude, yeah, honestly, I don't know the history of that. Like, I know that way back in the day, there there was like actual like cocaine and Coca Cola, right? <laughs> Something. Yeah, dude, I feel like it was a prohibition thing. Like, it's got to have been like people like just switched pretty much from like alcohol to opioids if they just didn't have access to alcohol. Yeah, but, honestly, I don't know much don't know. about that. F- from what I've heard about prohibition, it's just like uh, like underground alcohol trafficking was still just like rampant, and I think the reason why they ended up repealing it was just because like they're like this is never gonna gonna work out like people are just gonna Dude, get yeah. like yeah like it's 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 not easy to make alcohol but it's also like not that hard it, it's it's not hard to make shitty alcohol it's pretty hard to make good alcohol but at the end of the day in my opinion all alcohol kind of tastes like ass so as long as it's getting you fucked up then i feel like it fits the bill you know yeah that's all it does it's a functional thing Um, Yeah, exactly. For me, like for vaping, I feel like I could definitely go without nicotine. Like, but a big part of that, from what I'm kind of learning from talking to other people, is that I don't really inhale my vapes like that, like the same way other people Mm. do. So I don't really get a buzz from them too much. Like I get like a little bit, but it's not something I'm chasing. You know, it's always just for the flavors, which is kind of fucked, but it's true. That's like why I vape. (laughs) If I do vape, I don't really vape that much anymore. Dude, you should try some of uh, th- this brand of nicotine free ones I got. Hey, that has some dank flavors. Like, dude, the nicotine free ones yeah, taste no. way better. Like, they have always tasted better because oh. you don't have to like make it taste like shitty nicotine. Like, totally. I mean, yeah, like, I, I think the issue is that the flavor of nicotine itself is just like super bitter. So they need to kind of mask around right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, how, dude, how but, do you feel about or, Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that nicotine, bro, like, I don't have no problem with nicotine. I actually think it's a great tool, but like the effects of actually smoking are the things that like make vaping so bad, like smoking, like whatever the chemicals are in it. 
So it's like a tough thing because then it's like, okay, you can switch to like nicotine free vapes, but like in reality, you're kind of just getting none of the benefit but with all of the bad side effects, yeah. in my opinion, in my opinion, I don't know. Strictly my opinion, not medical advice, but <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, it's something that I've wondered at some point is like, what about nicotine itself is inherently bad for your health? Like, I, I'm pretty sure that nicotine itself does have some negative effects beyond just being like chemically addictive. Um, I'm just not like studied enough to, to know what they are. I just feel um, like in, it's my, like, I'm guessing that it can't be too much worse than coffee. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like a stimulant. But since you're smoking it, like, you can regulate the amount that you're getting a lot more easily. Uh, I guess that uh, makes it addictive. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. I, I mean, caffeine itself is also an addiction, right? Like, when people right, true. like drink coffee every day and they try to stop, like, they literally get withdrawals. So, yeah, I don't know. No, dude, I, I wanted to ask you how you feel about weed with regards to this question. Cause I know you're a big. Weed oh, fan. yeah. Dude, I feel like that's what makes this like a tough question because like I really do enjoy like getting baked and shit. And the hardest part for me is going to be the social aspect. Dude. But yeah. I will say that I can confidently say that my answer is shrooms because I went like in college, I pretty much got drug tested seasonally. Mm. And so, like, I had eight months of the year each year. Sometimes it was shorter, sometimes it was longer, where I, like, could not do anything that would show up on a drug test. So, like, I obviously wasn't smoking weed, and I literally just turned to shrooms and acid and shit. And so, it was, like, I still had a great time at all the parties and all that shit while tripping and everyone else was smoking. And, like, if anything, I was more functional and having, like, a better time, in my opinion. But Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, like you. You found a replacement for that in those situations, which is great. And th the fact that Sykes does show up on drug tests makes me so happy. I'm like, these are probably the most beneficial drugs on earth. Yes, me. So it's nice that they get around. Yeah. Uh, they get around that. Dude, that, that, that reminds me. Do you remember when our mutual friend in college, uh, got the job for like an oil company? And he found out he was going to be drug tested and he just went crazy on trying to like get, get the weed out oh of my his body. God, so he bro. passed the drug test, bro. Dude, he was like, I saw him at the gym every day, just sprinting on the treadmill, bro. And then he was going to shave his head at some point. Did he end up doing it? Did he end up doing it? I remember someone else did in a similar situation. No, yeah. I don't remember if it was him. I know that somebody did do that. And. Um, yeah, I had buddies who would buy a bunch of over the counter tests and they would test themselves periodically leading up to their like actual drug test, uh, to figure out like what their like half life decay was for like the, uh, what like the THC in, in their bloodstream or whatever. Um, yeah, Damn, dude, that was that's shit. legit. <laughs> dude, I could never risk it with that shit. Like, I, I've never, like, I love weed, but I've never fallen in love with weed that much. You know what I mean? Like, not to the point where I'm like stressing over like my employment. Oh yeah, definitely not. No, well, yeah, like it, my employment that I don't have yet, especially in college. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, and, and I think like I feel like there's this common phrase where it's like, you know, something is an addiction when it when you let it get in the way of other parts of your life. And I think that like it, if you're in the context of a job where you get drug tested frequently or there potential to be drug tests frequently, like, yeah, if you can't stop smoking weed and that's a risk that might make you lose your job, like, then that I think should lead to some self-reflection at least. Yeah. Addiction is yeah. hard, guys. We get it. If you're addicted to weed, like, you know, I've been there. Yuki used to be addicted to alcohol. <laughs> you're the fuck yeah. Yeah, and, and it's funny, I'm still like in the process of reframing how I viewed that time in my life. Like I 100% was, uh, but I just manifested in ways that was, that, that were just like, didn't feel like a traditional addiction. And also like everyone else was drinking all the time. Like it was, it was kind of yeah, tough. Yeah, it's tough when you're in that environment where it's like yeah, socially no, accepted. <laughs> dude, exactly. Yeah. And speaking of the social nature, like, I feel like I've been getting very slowly more in tune with the social aspects of smoking weed, right? Because I don't smoke often. Like I'm, my learnings about weed are happening at like a snail's pace because I'm just not experiencing it as much. But even this past weekend, like I just had a homie come over, um, we're vibing, we're watching a movie. He brought a joint over. 
we're just like chilling, smoking. It was it was honestly a positive experience. And now it's like at least I know enough about weed to like know when to stop smoking. Like it really doesn't take that much for me to get to like a comfortable high. That's not too crazy. Um and like honestly that I've been enjoying more and more. Like that's been growing on me, but I still have yet to ever like go out of my way to like buy weed in my life. But who knows? Maybe maybe that'll change in in 2024. I mean, you know, it might change with the times too. Just like it might just become way more of a casual thing. Yeah, yeah, and it definitely is. Um I mean especially in in states and places where it's already legalized and probably won't be legalized in our state for a minute, but yeah. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I still think it's a matter of when, not if. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Um, I think these things just take time, but you got to keep fighting the good fight, especially with psychedelics, you know? Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah. And then were there any other drugs that you were considering uh, for this question? I mean, Adderall crossed my mind, but I don't need it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have ADHD, so I'm not tripping about it. Uh, other than that, not really. <laughs> Yeah, I think well, when I tell people my top three, I think realistically they're mushrooms, 2CB, and either ketamine or MDMA. Um, it really depends. It's like, yeah, 2CB is awesome. I don't do it too often because honestly, to be fair, I've had quite plentiful supplies of 2CB um, for the last probably for all of like 2023 but i'm just kind of like rationing it for more special occasions or just taking like small amounts to kind of accentuate like other drugs that i'm taking um so that's a special one but i just anything that you snore like i just it just turns me off in terms of doing it on a super regular basis um yeah ketamine for the same reason and also just ketamine like if you're doing ketamine too often like like that drug can definitely fuck you up um and I've definitely yeah. been, I think, seeing more people around me, like, who I think have a little bit of a ketamine problem. Um, and, like, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm still being, like, surprisingly responsible. Not surprisingly, but I'm doing a good job of not doing ketamine too often. So that's good. Um, and then MDMA, like, yeah, like, if you're taking MDMA it's more than... starter for me, yeah. Yeah, if you're taking that shit more than once every three months on a regular basis, like, just you you need to give your brain a break man like it's just, it's just reflect a little bit you know like <laughs> yeah no and, and, and it's tough. good yeah yeah and it's tough because it is like such a beautiful substance like it's made me genuinely feel very grateful about just life in general uh, but th they're like especially things like that like such strong feelings of euphoria uh, like we're not meant to be feeling that way all the time because if we did and just become our new normal and it wouldn't be special anymore so some things you just have to save to be in the moment um springs to mind one of the 10 burning man principles which is um basically some nicer way of saying like being just like extremely in the moment just appreciating it and then when the moment passes just appreciate that it happens oh yeah all right man well i think that's a good place to stop it Thank you guys for listening, and that's today's pod. You've been listening to Modern Day Hippie. As you exit the portal, we have just one small ask of you. If you learned something new today, had a laugh, or resurfaced a drug story of your own, we want to hear about it. Drop us a comment on YouTube and show us some love on your favorite podcasting platforms. Internet algorithms really dog on us because of the topics that we discuss, so your support goes even further here than you might think. We'll catch you next week.